episode 52 of Strange Brow Radio. Thanks for joining me and my guest for today's adventure takes you to our podcast live at Manresa Castle, our first one of 2020, with guest Mary Bethune of the Olympic Peninsula Paranormal Society, or OPS. And Mary talks on stage live with me in front of a packed house at Manresa Castle in Port Townsend, Washington. So more about Mary in a second. But first, thanks to our sponsor, you know her, you love her, Aaron Farrell by Aaron, E-R-Y-N. Check out the Etsy shop. These alchemy sound tools, drums, rattles, and smudge fans. The holidays are over, but your need for Farrell by Aaron is never over. Check it out now. All right. More in a moment about our guest, Mary Bethune. We'll be right back. Well, today's guest, as I said, is Mary Bethune, who joined us at our first podcastle live at Manresa Castle in Port Townsend, Washington, said to be haunted. That's not why we chose the location. We chose it because it's a it's a freaking castle. <laughs> and they had some new owners that wanted to take a chance, and we're glad they did. So this was actually number two, test run number two in the library portion. Mind you, this is a free show, so if you're ever in town, let's say you're listening to this anywhere in the Pacific Northwest, uh, you could have been there and sat and watched Mary and I have a, a live discussion about her group, OPS, the Olympic Peninsula Paranormal Society, and they showed up with all their gear. I mean, it was a scene right out of Ghostbusters. They had everything but the... Uh, Slime. Well, we did have a little bit of a slimer show up. And let's just get this out of the way. Before the show actually started and Mary was asked to come on stage, there was some mingling going on. And one of the gals had brought an SLS camera, which if you don't know what that is, it is the game topper, I guess you'd call it, part of the Microsoft Connect gaming system, which has a little IR lens on it, a a little focal point lens that does a digital readout of what the human body looks like when you're standing in front of it by a grid matrix. It almost looks like a stick figure, a lime green stick figure in this case, outlines or inlines your body when you step in front of this camera. And you can see that on the monitor. So you have a stick figure kind of painted on your body as you walk in front of it. And it moves with you as you move. Well, Ghost Hunters got the idea that somebody did, brilliant, that you point this in a vacant area that's supposedly haunted, and if you see a little stick figure walking by, this lens is picking up on something walking around, not a person, not a living person at least. So while we were messing around with our gear, we had it pointed, well, the the gal, I forgot her name, had her connect cam pointed towards the stage where the music was playing and on top of the speaker box was a dancing little two foot tall three foot tall at the most little stick figure and it was dancing uh, with the rhythm it was quite a sight i even walked up to it and it stood on my hand we caught all this on video it it moved to the rhythm uh, it on one point there were maracha, maracas playing and it lifted its hand kind of like at maracas. <clears throat> you got to be there to see this stuff. How do you recreate that? The, the ghost team was even blown away by this. And uh, so that was totally unexpected. That's why you do live events because these kind of unexpected moments, you can't capture them when rehearsed. And uh, that's when I think the best stuff happens. And uh, we brought some of the Adams trackway. So we brought some Sasquatch uh, tracks, four tracks in particular from the Al Moon Lab that were cast in November. Uh, There were also some cedar sculptures that I do called Wood Watchers, which you can go 
look up that name on Facebook and see these uh, faces I carve. And um, then, of course, the creme de la creme Mary Bethune, who is just such a well-spoken advocate of the supernatural and paranormal and has been so many places, done so many investigations and is continuing to do it and working full-time. That's the thing. Most of us, all of us involved in this, all have day jobs and, uh, well, for the most part. And uh, Mary is no different. And so she, uh, she still keeps super busy while, while doing all of this. And she brought some show and tell for sure. And we ended the evening with a session, an ITC spirit box session, where you will hear, hear live time uh, us try to interact not only with this little dancing man that showed up. Well, why do I say man? In fact, after I listened to this audio, I don't think it was a man at all. There might be an EVP on this, and by the time I get this audio all edited out, I will uh, know for sure whether or not we caught a pretty significant EVP, and it sounds like a female voice to me. So um, that didn't involve the spirit box, that was just caught with my regular recorder. But we'll see, this could be debunked very easily, and in which case I will let you know. But the ITC box, uh, something called Necrophonic, it looks ridiculous as an app. You download it on your phone. It looks like something brought out of, um, you know, the worst goth store discount aisle ever. But it may have worked. <laughs> it's a pretty amazing app. And, um, you know, you got to be careful with this stuff, uh, I think. So take a listen. Tell me what you think in uh, the comments below this as well. Also, thank you to our our patrons without you uh, subscribing and getting a hold of hidden content on the Patreon page. We couldn't do this sh show, so thank you to the Patreon members at patreon.com forward slash strange brow radio. And thank you for all the five-star reviews and for liking and sharing the show. It helps us grow in 2020 and do more stuff. A um, lot of stuff that we'd like to do. And, uh, well, I'll get into that down the road. But first, let's check out our guest and meet Mary Bethune of the Olympic Peninsula Paranormal Society live at Manresa Castle in Port Townsend, Washington. All right. Mary has been a local paranormal investigator and case manager for Team Ops, O-P-P-S, for the last 11 years. She's an avid instrumental trans communication researcher and practitioner specializing in the ghost box, direct voice radio communication. From a young age, Mary has had a prophetic dreams and has been and also has seen and heard spirits. She is also an afterlife researcher hoping to teach and help everyone realize that life goes on after death as we witnessed here. Yep. She is actively involved with the Spirit Contact Team of North America Station and was trained by Rochelle Wright and with a lot of acronyms attached to your name yes. and repair <laughs> attachment, grief therapy. And you're, are you a nurse as well? I was a nurse. I'm a PA now. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So. And she's been a medical a practitioner for the last 43 years. Whoa. Long time. Nice. I was a corpsman for oh, cool. uh, six years up at... Uh, up at one of the islands here, Woodby right. Island. Uh, she lives in Bremerton, Washington, with her two sisters, three dogs, and two parakeets and various fish. Welcome to Strange Brow Radio. Thank you. It's good to have you here. This took a little bit of... Uh, Thanks for asking me. Yeah, absolutely. Just a little bit closer with that, just so it's kind of right up against your mouth. Okay, how's that? There we go. Okay. What we want to do is make sure that we get your audio and not their audio. Okay, got it. Perfect. Okay, so... We had some action here earlier, and you said that you'd never seen anything. I mean, I, I just want to go straight to what happened in the yeah. bar here to explain to people that weren't here that are listening. Uh, there is a SLS? SLS camera, yeah. SLS camera, and explain what that is. Well, I don't have a lot of experience, honestly, with the SLS camera, but I know that the, the way it works is through the Connect, okay. Connect box. And so the idea is it actually will 
if it sees something like we saw this, whatever this was, it right. actually puts points on on the entity or whatever yeah. it is. So um, yeah, I mean, I like I said, I, we've used it before, but ours is on a laptop. Our team uses ours on a laptop, and uh, but I've never seen anything like this. Before. Yeah. So I what? Mean, it, I never have. We have we have the front row here that has all of the right. ghost gadgets, and. They we had the bumper music playing. It was Martin Denny bachelor pad music, yeah. right? Circa like nineteen sixty five. And um pointed right at the table here and there was the uh a striking image of something dancing on the speaker. And it looked what they was encouraging about it was it was doing it to the rhythm. It was actually exactly. corresponding yep. with its feet and its hands. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I came up and gave it an embrace. Right. And it seemed to want to kind of dance with me. Yeah, it did. It was it on was, your hand and then it was on your Somebody head. wants to dance with me. Finally, I can't get <laughs> the young woman in the back here to ever dance with me. So Looks it good. looks like it's up to Mabel it over was here in the corner. interesting because it actually there was a part where it really looked like it was playing Morocco. So it was, yeah. And it was actually in rhythm with the music, which yeah. was pretty amazing so yeah okay so 43 years of working in the medical field yeah. how long have you been looking i mean you were born with the ability right to know other things yeah yeah okay. i mean from a young age i've heard and saw spirits um you know i i being so young it was just like oh well hey mom when you see that guy standing in the corner there and it would be right. like don't you know i come from a very was raised in a Puerto Rican Catholic family, so it was like, you know, don't don't say that, you know, don't don't say that. Okay. Don't even talk about it. And I would have these dreams, like I dreamt about my grandmother quite a bit, and we were going up to visit her because she was very ill. Mm -hmm. And I remember getting up and walking up, going into the kitchen where my parents were, and I said, well, we don't have to hurry now because grandmother, grandma's dead. And right at that same moment, the phone rings, and they pick up the phone, and it was the message that she had just died. So, Ay, caramba. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. And I've had other experiences with prophetic dreams. Um, I had a dream where I had lost, well, I had lost my dog and um, searching all over for him. This, we lived in New Hampshire at the time. And I was having this dream that he was dropped off at the end of this long road. Right. And so I remember jumping out of bed and running to the door and fl flinging open the door. And I did that. I woke up from the dream and ran to the door and opened it. And my, right. do my dog was there. Wow. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I've had a lot of those type of dreams. Some of them aren't so great. Um, I had a... I, things will come to me, like I call it a knowing, mm -hmm. where you just know something. And uh, this one was pretty unfortunate, but uh, my husband had just lost his dog and was pretty distraught. And I was, you know, I was watching him crying and, and this thing came to me and said, he... Your husband will be dead by before the end of December, and he died the following November. Wow. Yeah. So it, it's been that kind of stuff you yeah. know, my whole life. So, wow. Yeah. Okay. And you know a little bit about uh, this area in particular. Like, you've done active research right here in town. We've done some investigation at Menrest, so we've been here a couple uh -huh. times. Yeah. 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 In fact, I met you when we did our big Halloween uh, right. fiasco here back October. In fact, anybody listening, if you don't know what's going on at Manresa, just to divert, show up here, look at the, the Castle MPT Facebook page. They put on a pretty killer Halloween right. party here, they did, which yeah. I didn't see you show up at the no, I was, masquerade. I had to go to somewhere else. Yeah, <laughs> so. I know. It's a, it's a big party here, and uh, so I think we're, we'll do it again. Well, next year, well. definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. So what are the misnomers uh, as far as paranormal research? Let's get the record set straight here, you know, because so much of what people are familiar with, unfortunately, well, I shouldn't say unfortunately because I, I watch a lot of it mm -hmm. too on TV, but yeah. it's a lot of, uh, you know, things we're trying to constantly uh, mm -hmm. bring out the yeah. worst of a ghost and yeah. maybe, you know, by what we saw earlier here, yeah, there's a lot of friendly stuff here. Maybe Casper actually exists. So yeah. let's yeah. set the record straight here. Yeah, I'm going to let you do that. Well, um, first of all, I would say don't believe pretty much anything you see on these paranormal shows because they're they're out for the the numbers. You know, they're out for the viewers. Um, mm -hmm. They they have to make it interesting so frequently you're going to hear oh this is a demon or this is an evil entity um or they make it look like 
you're going to get evidence every time you go somewhere, every time you do something. And uh, that's not how it works. You know, you're going to spend a lot of hours sitting in a dark room, <laughs> bored out of your mind, uh, okay. until something comes along, until something happens. Um, but those are the, the biggest misnomers, because people will go out and they have these expectations as to how it's supposed to be, uh -huh. you know. But it's, it's not like that at all. Okay, so you, you mentioned that when people go to houses, you know, let's just take Ghost Adventures for mm -hmm. example. Uh, everyone watches Ghost Adventures on Travel Channel, familiar with yeah. uh, them going inside and trying to aggravate a, a spirit in there. Um, you know, there seems to be something to the fact that people have these attachments where phenomena follows them from house to house. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that does happen, yeah. Is that, is that rare? I think it's rare. I mean, in my experience, I've only seen that once in 11 uh -huh. years. That's uh, we had a, and it was actually what's interesting. It was attached to the piece of furniture. Okay. And it wasn't actually attached to the person. So, but that's been my experience where these folks had bought, had had some activity in their bedroom, and mm -hmm. um, they kept hearing all this noise around their uh, dresser. Okay. And we ended up finding out that the dresser had belonged to an old man, and he used to keep his wallet in this one drawer where all the activity was around. And they had bought it in a second-hand shop, so we had to kind of dig back and find out the history on that. But, um, I, and we've had clients that I have talked to that um, feel like they're being followed by a, a spirit. Mm -hmm. um, but most of them have felt that it was negative. Mm -hmm. And the bit of research and case management I've done, my experience has been usually it's, it's not. So... When you call them clients, how many clients do you have? It just depends. You know, we have a helpline and people will call us. A yeah. literal helpline? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And, and don't ask me the number because I don't <laughs> know. It's, it's terrible. Wait, so you go home and you check your voicemail and yeah. there's somebody. People give will me call. A, give me an example of a call. Um, well, I'll get a call and say, you know, I'm, basically they'll say I'm having this activity in my home. I feel like, you know, I have, for instance, this one lady in Shelton, um, she called and said I... You know, I've been choked and slapped and scratched, mm -hmm. and the, my dog's been attacked and um, that type of stuff. And so what I usually will do is I go out and interview them. So we have this whole mm -hmm. process. We always go to a public place. We have this process that we do. We have a whole interview, like I think it's like, what, three or four pages, something like that, that we use to – and we'll, we'll go, kind of do a pretty in-depth interview right. about the – about what it is, the experience. Mm -hmm. um, we also look into their, you know, mental health history, drugs, alcohol. Okay, let the, well, let's go there then, real yeah. quick, just to focus in on that. Because yeah. interviewing people about their mental health, how do you delicately work that into the fabric of "I believe you, I want to help you," yeah. but yeah, it could be the Prozac baby. Yeah. So what's well, what I usually tell people up front, I, I will say, you know, I have an interview form. I'm going to ask you a lot of different questions. Mm -hmm. I'm going to ask you about you know, the history of the house, your medical history, you know, if you take any medications, right. um, that type of thing. So I kind of prepare them ahead of time. Mm -hmm. So when I get to the part, a lot of times I'll say, okay, this, this part might make you feel a little bit uncomfortable, you know, but I'd appreciate whatever answers you can give me right. about this particular, you know, mental health issue. And then you move, okay, so then you move on into the point where, let's say, you believe them. Yeah. You, you move on to the, mm -hmm. the next level. So yeah. what happens there? Well, what we do is, what we normally do is we'll either sit down or talk through the forum about, well, is this a case that we think we can help them with? Mm -hmm. You know, because we'll find out what's the, what's the haunting or what, is, what, what kind of activity is going on. So we do that first. Okay. And if we feel like, yes, we can help these people, um, then we'll proceed to set up an investigation. Um, and not a lot of times we can't, you know, they're, like this one particular lady, mm -hmm. um, I had to refer her. I mean, this activity was pretty intense and we normally don't deal with those type of investigations. So I actually referred her to a group back East that actually does that type of, that type of negative entity work. Yeah. Yeah. And you're so. not saying the word evil. No. No. Yeah. And not in your vocabulary? No. Mm -mm. No. Mm -mm. Okay. I, I really believe that when people die, they take their personality with them. You know, okay. so if they were evil before, more than mm -hmm. likely they're going to be evil after, you know. So, but you, and you get a negative case, right? Mm -hmm. uh, 
you will not work it at all. Not necessarily. It just depends on the case. I mean, uh-huh. I I felt after we talked after we talked with the, t- the team, we all talked. We felt like this was something that maybe was beyond what we could deal with. Okay. Um, meaning, basically, this this group back east was a sanctioned demonic team through the Catholic Church. Basically, that they, they were they did exorcism. Mm-hmm. They worked with the demonic side of things. Now, I. That it's tough because I don't believe in demons, mm-hmm. but like you said, I believe in negative, negative spirits that can cause problems. And mm-hmm. um, so we just felt like, you know, there's not much we can do because we always ask the client, what is your expectation? What would you like to get out of this? Mm-hmm. You know, do you want the spirit to stay? Do you want them to go? Do you want to, you know, do you just want to know who it is so you can and how to work, how to live with them? Because some people will do that. So. And they most likely always want them to go, don't they? Not all the time. Really? Yeah. Some people just want to know that they're not negative because it's scary. People, you know, they're reaching out because it's so unknown to them. Right. They're looking for answers. You know, is this is this going to hurt me or hurt my family? Or mm-hmm. is this going to cause any type of problems in my home, like in my daily life, that type of thing? Oh, yeah. What about the constant disruption of having... A ghost that generally seems to want to play tricks. I mean, how yeah. do you talk someone in, into, well, you can't really talk them into yeah. wanting it, but right. for them to decide that that's something that they want, even if it's a loved one. Yeah. Yeah, um, it's it's interesting because there will be, sometimes there will be split in the mm-hmm. family. Some say, yeah, well, we just want to know if it's Uncle Joe. You right. know? And other people say, well, we want him to go. You know, mm-hmm. But we leave that up to the client. We mm-hmm. say, look, this is what we have. This is the uh, evidence that we have. These are some of our recommendations. Right. Yeah. So I usually work. It's worked out pretty well. There's only been, like I said, a few times, very few times where mm-hmm. we couldn't help the client. So. And you help them mainly locally? Uh, yeah, locally. Uh-huh. We'll, I mean, we'll go to Tacoma, Seattle. We'll go north. Right. Um, you know, if we get calls, we'll go. Yeah. So. And you guys are all kind of locally funded. We're all, yeah, this we're all local. You don't charge no we don't we do not charge no we um we're all from the area like bremerton silverdale Mm -hmm. port orchard that type of thing so So you're near the naval shipyard yep Mm -hmm. how haunted is the naval shipyard you know i don't know but i can tell you that the uss turner joy which is a floating vietnam era Mm -hmm. ship it's a museum now is haunted we've investigated their I think I've investigated there at least three times, but mm-hmm. it's definitely haunted. It's got a lot of activity. Yeah, yeah but nobody in the shipyard has asked for assistance. No, I, I've no. talked to a couple of shipyard workers through my work, mm-hmm. who they because they know what I do on the side, and um, it's really it's almost impossible to get in there because of the security. You know, mm-hmm. you, you can't get in there. But hmm. when you get a call from someone that wants help, mm-hmm. is it more often a guy calling or a woman? A woman. It is. Most of my experience has been women. And why do you think that is? Uh, Because I think women are the caretakers. Mm -hmm. They want to find a solution. Um, I've often heard from women, oh, my husband or my boyfriend thinks it's it's a bunch of bunk, that it's noise in the attic or noise in the, you know, whatever. Yeah. Or or noise in the basement or, you know, things expanding in the house. But And that's been a lot of my experience. Mm -hmm. So, and sometimes it is. I mean, we've gone in places where, no, this is not paranormal. This is Mm -hmm. just, you know, you're your gas heater making noise or whatever. <laughs> right, so, right, right. Or an animal in the attic or something, you know. Yeah. So amazing. Yeah. It, but most of the time we will find some type of activity. And like I said, I've never I don't ever remember a case where that we took that was like, you know, really, really negative. So No. Mm-mm. Okay. So tell me about the last case that you worked as a team because you yeah you, this is your team yeah we got a, or is we, this part of your team it's part of the team a, okay. a bunch of people are um off and we have some ex-team members here but once you're on the team you kind of never get off the team oh, you know? like the core yeah exactly right. <laughs> this is exactly right <laughs> well the last case we had what was it that was gig harbor yeah i was in gig harbor and it was a mom who called and was really concerned because uh there was uh some the children of course it involved children we always are on a high alert when we hear children right um, where the children were seeing um, spirits mm-hmm. um, scaring them. L- the little little kids were talking about spirits that were scaring them, uh, appearing, you know, shadows. Um, mm-hmm. What else, Brian? I can't remember. 
scratches. Yeah, that's right. Scratches were one of them. And the, the dog had been acting really strange. Mm-hmm. So, um, and we did get a fair amount of um, EVPs and ghost box stuff from there. And we actually had one of our team members who's a psychic on our team. We went out and were able to um, find out who this person was. And we were able to pass him over. Oh, really? Yeah. So you go back and you kind of try to figure out if it's we a will. neighbor that shot himself kind of deal? Right. Yeah, okay. we do historical research. Uh-huh. You know, we don't have a historical researcher right now because Brian's our team leader now. And okay. uh, so, um, but we try to do historical research on, uh, you know, look at the background mm-hmm. of the property, uh, to see if, just see what's significant, what isn't. Oh, right. Yeah. And uh, so, and a lot of times the we'll, we'll present, once we go through all our evidence, we'll pick the best evidence that we have and we'll, you know, burn a disc and write up a report mm-hmm. and go and present it to the client after we're done and kind of go, talk through it and tell them what we think we found. Um, like I said, some people don't, want to do anything but other people do mm-hmm. and it, this one lady wanted whatever was there to be gone so that's mm-hmm. why mckenna mckenna and i went over and we uh, she mm-hmm. well she did most of it <laughs> she did all of it actually actually to get him to, to cross over right and we got good feedback that the house everything was quiet so when children are involved in this let's say you know 10 years and older mm-hmm. they're clued in to what their parents are feeling i mean i exactly. certainly was yeah so do you bring them you recommend that they are transparent with the process as far as what is actually going on or what, how do you do that how do you deal with, with kids? the family as a unit and then separating maybe the kids from the conversation yeah. well I'll, I'll i'll actually ask the parents i said how, what what are you mm-hmm. comfortable with do you want the kids to be here while mm-hmm. we talk about this do you do you want them here while we do the investigation mm-hmm. and most of the time, the parents are okay with the interview, but don't want them around for the investigation, which I, I think that makes sure. sense. Yeah. Yeah. And that, that's the easiest way to do it. But know? the kids are like little broadband uh, oh, frequency oh, yeah. gauges. So they pick up everything. It's yeah. almost like, oh, I wish we could have them. <laughs> yeah. 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 Has that ever happened where a child is actually involved in the investigation actively with you? We've had that, yeah. Yeah. But most of them have been older. Uh-huh. Not not little ones, but mostly no. older. Um, so no no Carol Ann types. No, that, God okay. no. <laughs> Nothing like that. <laughs> no no Carol Ann. No. <laughs> but uh, we've had uh, older kids, you know, like yeah. teens. Maybe they they'll stay in the house. But most of the time, it seems like did the gig harder kids stick around? They did stick around. Yeah, and these kids were what they were toddlers. Yeah. So okay. one was about four, I think. Yeah. Uh huh. And one of them was saying, "Well, I see the I see the man in the door." You know, I didn't see anything, but um, yeah. But th- once they got to bed, they put them down, and they went and st- when they went in the room with the kids and slept with the kids through the night. So we investigated the rest of the house. Oh night. wow! Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Scratches. I want to know about that part of the conversation. You mentioned that uh, one of the cases there were scratches. Mm-hmm. How often, when you work a case, is there a physical implication or a scratch or a bruise you know, or something like that? Is that fairly common, it, or is it rare? I think it's rare. I really mm-hmm. do. I mean, we've had a lot of cases through the last eleven years, and I would say maybe, maybe three, where there was actual scratches. Mm-hmm. You know, people had taken pictures and stuff. Only like three. That. Yeah, and really? I can remember. Yeah, at this point. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So uh, I don't think it's that common. I really don't. Okay, and mm-hmm. you've never been scratched. Nope. Never. I've been pushed. Anybody on your team ever been um, physically harmed or scratched? McKenna's been scratched, but not on an investigation. She was at, uh, it was a... McKenna, where are you at? Oh, she did. Okay, back there. It was at a um, antique shop in uh, Port Townsend. Oh, yeah. really? Yeah. So, okay. Yeah. Antique shop. Mm-hmm. But I've been pushed and I've been touched and my hair's been pulled and mm-hmm. that type of thing. So. Are antique shops something that you should smudge after going into? I mean... Antique shops have a lot of objects that oh, yeah. may have attachments. The, the, so oh, yeah. You recommend people take precautions when taking yeah. something home from a yeah. antique shop? I, I always tell them to make sure, especially like that one lady, that one case we had, mm-hmm. you know, make sure that you cleanse, you know, do a, a saging or do an intention saying, you know, whatever's attached to this can't come home with us, that type right. of thing. Because that, that, that can happen. I've seen it. Like I said, I've seen it. We had that case where that happened, so... Is it your okay? Let's talk about the cleansing process. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of different ways to do it. Right, right. You can go get a crucifix, holy water, whatever, sage. 
Are you of the mind that it has something to do with the properties of what you're using to cleanse, or is it because of the intention? How does that work? I, I think it's both. Mm -hmm. I, I do, because, you know, the intentions are pretty powerful. Um, mm -hmm. You know, there's a lot of energy that goes behind intentions. And I think, I mean, the sage is has the quality anyway of clearing the air. It's used for a lot of different things, and that's one of the things that's, that it's used for. So. Yeah, in fact, I wish I had access to my computer there. If anybody is on there, in fact, I'll just use you guys as my human Google. Yeah, um, oh, cool. Yeah, uh, Sage has all these weird uh, properties to it mm -hmm. where it's uh, known to kill bacteria, I it's think. It's antibacterial yeah. and antiviral. I actually used to have my patients um, gargle with it. Really? Yeah, make a tea out of it and gargle for bad sore throats, strep uh -huh. throat. It works. I'll be darned. It works. Okay, you heard it here first. Yeah, it works. It works. It Gargle really with sage. Yeah. Does, it doesn't. Bartender, get me a <laughs> sage. Uh, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. yeah come up a with shot something. of sage. A shot yeah, of sage. Yeah, a shot of sage. All right. <laughs> so. Um, okay. Interesting. All right. So, is that something that you would do after you leave a place like this? Would you sage since we kind of feel that the, this place mm -hmm. is haunted. You feel like this castle is haunted, don't oh, you? Oh, yeah, definitely. Would you sage after you left here? Um, I What I do is before I go into any investigation or any place like this, I mm -hmm. will do like a protection visualization mm -hmm. where some people, everybody does it differently, but I do like a white light, like a protection okay. white light, and then I have a certain, I have a certain phrases that I'll say mm -hmm. that are personal to me. You know, some people will do the Lord's Prayer. Some people will do whatever, you mm -hmm. know. But that's what I usually do. It's pretty rare that I sage. I don't think anybody in our team has, really. Yeah. But um, I, that's how I do it. Mm -hmm. I have the intention before I go, and I do the visualization for protection. And mm -hmm. I really can only think of two times where something followed me home, and both were from Walker Ames at Port Gamble. So... Okay. Which is... And I hear a lot about this place, oh, Walker Ames. It, Describe I, people Port Gamble and Walker Ames. Well, Port Gamble is... It was based on a town from Maine, um, a logging town. So it has that Maine quaint, quaintness to it. And um, the whole place is haunted. I mean, there are spirits in... All, well, you know, you've been there, Darren, you know. Um it, the whole town has ghosts in almost every building. The Walker Ames was the original house um, for uh, the supervisors. Right. And there's um, there's quite a few entities in there. I think some of them come and go. I think some of them are some of the owners, you know, Mrs. Walker, Mrs. Ames, you know, the, mm -hmm. the Walker family that lived there, Walker Ames family that lived there. And there's a lot of kids up in the attic, too. Really? Yeah. A lot of kids. It's really cool because I used to take my, my dog, was a part of our team, and she's unfortunately passed away. But every time we would take her there, the, we would get some of the best ghost box and EVP stuff because of her because they really were interested in her. So it's a great place. It's not negative. You don't have mm -hmm. to worry when you go in there, you know, something going to get me. or it, It's not like that at all. It's, it's fabulous. I, I would recommend it. Now, is there a place near there, though? I heard this from psychic William Becker and mm -hmm. Dave Emmons, yeah. that there's uh, some child that was trapped somewhere, kept apart. I've, I've heard that in uh, the basement, but... Yeah, kind of like a Quasimodo type Yeah, I've scenario. heard that, but my experience in the basement has not been... I, I have not picked up on that at okay. all. And there hasn't been any history. There's no way to find mm. any information on that, so that really can't be verified. So I Now, are you an empath in tune enough to where you know these kind of things? Well, I there are, like I said, I see, mm -hmm. see them and I hear them. So mm -hmm. And I will get impressions about places mm -hmm. before I go or, or when I'm in there I will do that yeah mm -hmm. so but uh, like I said the Walker Ames is we've spent the night there we've had a few uh, had quite a few experiences there and gotten some great evidence from there so and this isn't a place you can just walk into no uh, yeah it's but closed to the public yeah right? you can go on Pete's Pete Orbea you can go on his uh, uh -huh. paranoid Port Gamble Paranormal, that's it. And you can go on a ghost tour, which is excellent. He'll take you around, and towards the end, you actually get to go into the Walker Ames mm -hmm. and do an invest a mini investigation. And you can actually rent it for a couple hours to do an investigation. Wow. Yeah, so. With him there. Yeah, yeah. he'll be, he'd be there. Someone would be there, yeah. Historic yeah. building. Yeah. And then they do a yearly conference? They do a yearly conference. Uh -huh. We just, just had the 10th year celebration. Oh, really? Yeah, 10 years, yeah. Okay. You, you should check it out. Yeah. It's really fun. I know. I just kind of moved to town about oh, six right. or seven months ago, so I'm 
new to all the cool stuff going on here. But that was one I definitely wanted to check out. Okay. And then they did that at the casino, did they? They did it at the casino uh, this year, which was kind of strange. Um, yeah. Um, it's definitely a different vibe, different venue. Right. It kind of takes the mystique of like, it does. oh, the building's right there. Yeah. There's a ghost. Exactly. You know, I can see it. Yeah. yeah. We had some classes at Port Gamble, but most of them were at uh, the casino. Okay. And, but all the investigations, of course, were at Port Gamble. Yeah. I think we investigated what, four or five, five buildings at least, five or six they have open. Yeah, there's quite a few. Yeah. Yeah. What, what's that, Darren? Oh, that's right. Yeah. yeah, Darren Locke is in the audience, ladies and gentlemen. If you don't hey, know Darren. this man here, just real quick, this man here is an amazing musician, and you can see him every so often playing in the beautiful town of Silverton at the Guitar Cafe. Sasquatcher, <laughs> and he is. Yes, yeah. he came with a Sasquatch shirt on. Now, okay, so since we do talk a little bit about Bigfoot here, um, you know, I'm of the mind that Sasquatch is somehow attached to the spirit realm mm -hmm. just as much as it is to the physical realm. There's other critters out there, too, that are probably like that. When you're doing a ghost hunt, do you ever wander in anything that looks like a Bigfoot or acts like... I, I've, I never have, but I have had an experience... Um, of some type of cryptid that I cannot tell you what what it was. Um, we were at yeah. Well describe the investigation. Well, we were at Wellington, which is is it Snoqualmie or is, yeah, Snoqualmie. It's past Snoqualmie. Uh, Stevens Pass. Stevens Pass. Excuse okay. me. And it's it was the site of one of the biggest um, snow train fall uh, train accidents. Killed a bunch of people. So uh, we went down there to investigate. So we were there for a long time and collected all this evidence and went back to our uh, campsite. Right. So everybody gets back in their tents and I'm laying there and all of a sudden I hear this somebody running and breathing really heavily and I'm going, what the heck? So I looked out my tent and this guy, this, I can't explain it, this guy was being chased by this thing that was about maybe 12 feet tall. And it looked like an, a praying mantis, almost. <laughs> yeah, I know. And I wasn't high. I wasn't doing drugs or drinking <laughs> or nothing like that. So, yeah. And I wasn't asleep because I had just gotten back. And I remember right. looking at this going, and it was like up, up on its tail, you know, it was up on its tail and its arms were out. And I'm like going. And then I thought, oh, someone has to be dressed in a costume. But that's a big costume to be running in. I mean, that thing is, and you're thinking about how tall this is you know, at least 12 feet, and I'm thinking, so I just went back into my tent and got, <laughs> it closed my tent, I said, I'm, mm -mm. No? I, no, I'm not going out there, I don't know what that was, I, I really don't know, that's probably the strangest cryptid thing, that's it, that's the only time I've ever seen anything like that. Uh, I have so many questions there, wait, now, okay, so, <laughs> no, it's really strange. Yeah, it's so you of... unzip your tent, you see this poor guy running for his life, Yeah, screaming. he's running, well, he's not screaming, but he is running fast. And he knows that this thing's after yeah. him. Yeah. That's uh, why he's screaming. Yeah, and he's running like yeah. really fast. And you yeah. don't know this person? No. Mm -mm. Okay. Mm -mm. And they're physical. This is not... No, it's physical. It's, okay. Yeah. Okay. It was definitely real. And you see a 12-foot tall insect. That's what it looked like. Yeah. yeah. Like a pr okay. praying man is kind of... We got to know more details. 12-foot tall, green, yellow... Green. Uh -huh. Green. And then it had... Um, it was like... It was like it was leaning back on a tail. It's yeah, what do you mean thing. by that? Like, well, it's like I mean, you, I, yeah, they have that. The, well, the praying man is head. It's got the yeah. small head, and it's got the long arms. Yeah. But it had a bunch of long arms coming off the torso, and then it was leaning back when it was running. It was like the tail was dragging. I guess that's the okay. way I can describe it. Yeah, and they got little wings too. I mean, no, I didn't see any no wings. wings. Okay. I just saw all these whatever you want hands, digits. I don't know what. The, don't like know. you would picture a praying mantis, like the little yeah, chopstick but, look. Yeah, but they okay. had a bunch of those. They had a bunch of those all the way down the side. Okay, <laughs> and I'm thinking. What the hell is that? I mean, I don't know what I don't know what it was. Well, so you zip up the tent, and what had you just hear the screams of terror? I, well, in the I, this guy kept running, and I just was like, oh, I'm not looking at. And I'm thinking, didn't anybody else like? Yeah, what what was everybody else doing? I don't know what's happened with the team here. I don't know, what but is, it was. Like, why is it Mary's problem? <laughs> yeah, it's Mary's problem. <laughs> Go get a can of raid for crying out loud! <laughs> what the hell? Yeah, it was All really right. strange, but it, yeah, it was weird. I uh, and I did ask people, hey, did you? Yeah. Notice anything weird last night? <laughs> you know, anything, anything strange? Did you hear anything? Did you? Oh no, I didn't see anything. It's like it was me. I, wow. I don't know. So it, wait, you wake up the next day, and what was your response to like looking for 
I don't know, praying mantis tracks. Well, I did. I went out and started looking around, but I I couldn't see anything. I mean, you know, I think people had... I couldn't see anything. I mean, I just kind of so walked all over. This guy could be the... dead. We he could have been dead. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. But all I knew, I mean, I was a chicken man. It freaked. It really freaked me out. I just thought, okay, I, this. I mean, my first thought was, I'm not really seeing this. This is. Yeah. This is not. It has to be someone in a costume, chasing somebody. Well, could it have been? I don't think so because this thing was big, and Too to big. run in a costume like yeah. that, this thing, they were running. I mean, it it was moving pretty good. Yeah. So. Yeah, it's one of those unexplained. And that was weird. that your one and only time with an alien or cryptid? Yeah, yeah, that's the only time that's ever happened. Interesting. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Okay. Now you had the opportunity to document this. Mm-hmm. I mean, even though it was incredibly brief, mm-hmm. this happens too when we're out on our little investigate. I feel like such a asshole when I say we're on an investigation, like yeah. we're part of the Scooby team or something yeah. like that. When we're out there being nerds looking for trouble. Yeah. And you know, when trouble comes, you're like, oh well, I'm gonna get my camera out. I'm gonna right. get my recorder. Right. Surely you run into the problem too of like being taken away with the moment like, oh my gosh, I didn't have my Exactly. That's exactly what I thought too. I said I didn't ha- I didn't get my camera. Yeah. Well how how do you guys get over that? Like are you to the point now where you're sell so quick and ninja like with your Scooby gear that you can flip it on <laughs> Sometimes. immediately? Sometimes, yeah, not all the time. It just depends on on the situation. Uh-huh. Now Brian and I were at uh, the Hastings house here in Port Townsend. We're doing an investigation, and uh, we were doing a ghost box session. And if we play it later, you'll hear it. Yeah, but um, we will play it. There were um, the uh, fire alarm kept going on, yeah. going off, and one of the psychics got the name Pete, and so I said Pete. Are you going to fix that? And you hear, be there for that. You hear, clear as a bell. And then Brian and I were walking down the hall, and the, the alarm goes off again. I said, Pete, come on, fix it. And you hear him go, I mean, we both hear it. We both hear it, excuse me. Yeah. He thought it was me, and I thought it was him. We hear, shut up. <laughs> and then you hear this laughing afterwards. So, yeah. yeah. So that kind of stuff, we had our recorders with us. Yeah. So that was the good good thing. Is that one of the protocols? Is there like a tech guy who's like, okay, I... I'm making sure all the cameras are charged yeah. and everything. We have a tech manager. Who's yeah. the who's the tech person? Well, our we tech have? person is on leave right now. Oh, okay. You said that earlier. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So he's on leave right all now. Right. So we. But have there's to get always a someone person. assigned to say. Usually, there's someone at the at the um, mm. at the desk, you know, writing down any anomalies, or if we call in, we'll say, you know, at such and such time, I mm. saw this. You know, we usually will do that. But we we will put in cameras in the rooms. We will put in um, mm-hmm. uh, recorders. And a lot of times, most of the time, I will carry a recorder and put it down in the room that we're in. So. you have any suggestions for what kind of uh, digital recorder besides that one that's like the $3,000 yeah, Panasonic? No, what, any, really, I have a Sony and an Olympus, and they weren't that expensive. Uh-huh. So it's just a basic one. But you want something that will, and I think most of them do now, uh, that will plug into your computer so you can download all uh-huh. your all your data. You okay. Know, so, yeah. So the sa- you're not getting any more success out of a digital recorder than an analog? I, I don't think so, no. Okay. Yeah. You know, I have a um, an H2, which is um, basically a microphone, mm-hmm. and that thing is great, but it's almost too good because it picks up everything. Right. Yeah. And, and yeah. that's the downfall of that, but it's... Uh, and it's it was couple hundred bucks when I bought it a couple of years ago, so I don't know how much they are now. Right. But, but you don't have to spend a ton of money on equipment. No, and we noticed, too, that just a simple, uh, when we were doing an investigation down here in Cottage Grove, th- it was literally just the simple act of putting it out there and setting your intention yeah. that, hey, yeah. you, can, you can turn this off, whatever you mm-hmm. want. It seemed to, you know play a part in that so, it does yeah it does like we'll go into a place where i will and a lot of our teammates will all go in and say hi i always say hello i always mm-hmm. introduce myself you know we're here to visit we're here to talk to you you know that's probably the most is that the most important tool that you can bring is your own yeah absolutely gray I, matter yep yeah i believe that i really do I, your intention is everything mm-hmm. because i really believe that you know with the survival of consciousness you st- you go when you go you take your you take yourself with you you mm-hmm. know all your quirks everything and um, I wouldn't want it, someone to come into my house and start yelling at me oh, what are you doing here you know that kind of right. provoking that type of thing so I, yeah. I think you get a better response really yeah do. provoking that's yeah. the that's the word I was looking yeah, for yeah no earlier. that's stupid I think 
you know. No, but they seem to be getting results. I don't know. Are they? I don't know. Are they? I don't. Th- I don't think so. I don't. I don't, don't think so. I don't. You don't think provoking gets results? Well, it can. You're going to get someone pissed off. That's what's going to happen. Yeah. And uh, that could be not. That can really go downhill. But with right? a finite, I'm not defending it, but I'm no. just saying. Let's say we wanted to get evidence tonight. We got a three hour window. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, we got lucky with your little camera back there, right. but um, you know, people. It sounds like I'm defending him. I'm not. I'm just saying I can see a production crew saying, okay, let's piss him off because we yeah. got we got two days to get some yeah. footage here. You think that's where it comes from is desperateness? I mean, are they it, desperate to get the shot or are they just kind of give that's up? That's very possible. But I, And, yeah, they want, they want results. Yeah. And I think that's why they do it. Now, I was on um, – Scott and I, our case manager, we were on My Ghost Story, and we did right. uh, Turner Joy, which was fun. But it was interesting because, you know, we were wanting to represent the facts as we found them, and we wanted to represent the history of the ship. And uh, they kept asking questions like, well, weren't you shocked? Weren't you scared? It's <laughs> like, right, right. no. <laughs> well, can you say that? No. You know, I mean, it was weird, but that's kind of what they want. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Yeah, it's always with the same, you know, if the newscast is talking about it, it's always with the, the same spooky music as they're exactly. talking about the Turner toy. Yeah, yeah, that gets gets really old. It really does. Have yeah. you ever toyed with uh, walking away from this for a period of time? Did you ever go into like a, a retirement from this just kind of fed up from the things that we've talked about already mm-hmm. or just burnout and period. Yeah. I mean, there's burnout and everything. Oh, Did yeah. you ever get burned out? Oh from yeah. This? Yeah. Yeah. I took, uh, I took like three months off one time. Yeah. You know, I said, you know, I'm taking a break. And it was good. I'm glad I did because I yeah. came back refreshed. And, um, you know, part of the case manager's job is not only doing, um, you know, fielding clients, but you mm-hmm. go out and get investigations. You get, uh, get involved in the community. Mm-hmm. You know, we've done like um, we've done classes at the at the libraries. We've mm-hmm. done stuff for the food bank. Um, mm-hmm. So you're kind of involved in doing all that. So it's a lot. It's a lot of work. It really is. On top of your regular job, it's it's a lot of work. It really is. But. You're right. You do get burned out. So yeah, I'm glad I did that. It was really good for me. Yeah, yeah. and there's no hard feelings about. Oh that. no, yeah. no, no, no. Everybody on our team is really is pretty good about that. Yeah. yeah. So interesting. Yeah. How about anybody in the group here? Has anybody got burnout before from this and taken a hiatus at all? You guys are pretty focused in on your work. I can tell. All right, nobody there. Darren. Yeah. You got yeah. Well. Right. I guess what exactly. I'm getting at is I've, there's some people that walk away from uh, the paranormal community and they don't want to talk about it ever again. Yeah. And you can't even access them. Yeah. And it's not a hiatus. It's a long hiatus. They're done. Yeah. <laughs> yeah they're long done. hiatus. Yeah. yeah. They're done. <laughs> they're yeah. done. Yeah. So has that ever happened on your team where just like it either got too intense mm-hmm. or their spouse didn't like it? Yeah. or is that I think there are the few people that... There are one or there's like two team members who left and didn't really want anything to do with it. Mm-hmm. Um, one was I think that it was just too much of a time commitment for him. Mm-hmm. I think that was the biggest thing. And the other, it was a husband and wife that were on the team. I'm not talking about you guys, <laughs> just letting you know uh, that um, were having difficulties. Let's just say they were having marital yeah, difficulties, sure. making things difficult. On mm-hmm. the team, and, and they left for that reason, but not. Mm-hmm. Uh, but they don't want anything to do with it anymore. Again, they're done. Done, done. Yeah. So. Yeah, and does it conflict with anybody's religious worldview? And had them walk away? Have you ever seen that? Where they? No, not on our team. No, uh, no. Well, we've got we've got a couple. We've got like two two people. Well, one one person on the team that's actually a, a mm-hmm. Christian Christian, but they're. Um, they're pretty obviously open-minded, right? You know, otherwise they wouldn't be they wouldn't be there. So, mm-hmm. but, yeah. All right. Well, uh, you brought you have your ops folder there. We have some sounds that we yeah. can play too. That sounds good. Um, you have a zip file full of stuff that I want to get to. Okay. Um, I know I want to. I'm going to be the guy that has to go down there and do this at the same time as as speak. Let's. Um, Let's do a little five-minute break here. Okay. I will get the uh, sounds loaded. Okay. Don't leave anywhere here. It's, uh, I th- what time is it? It's right. um, 7.53. Why don't we meet back here?
by uh, 7.58, five minutes from now. And uh, we'll get uh, the sounds loaded here. And Mary, you're going to help me uh, narrate uh, okay. what's going on okay. here. So we'll be right back here in five minutes. And thank you again to our sponsors at strangebrowradio.com. There is a little tiny drop-down box, and it says Patreon members. If you go on there, you can contribute a small amount. There's two levels. You can find one that fits for you. Let's say you want more video content. Well, there's a level for that. Or you just want to listen to more Strange Brow Radio. There's a level for that. There'll be more levels. My gosh, it's coming up and uh, things like books and, and of course, uh, T-shirts and hoodies and things of that nature. Hats. I've been asked for hats and, and beer mugs for the times where you need to pour yourself whatever ails you. And so that's coming up, and um, that'll be at patreon.com forward slash strangebrowradio. Or you can just go to strangebrowradio.com and find the drop-down box in the upper right-hand or left-hand corner. And there it is. And things like last night, Mary Bethune. That will be on patreon.com. Um, that is exactly where we'll put the video content. And it uh, through things like I discussed with the SLS camera, the on-site ghost investigation that happened last night um, that will also be up there so there's some there's some stuff and we're growing show and that kind of move on your part to contribute where you can would be most appreciated and of course after the holidays everybody kind of hits the brakes financially i get that but if you can and are thinking of doing so, just take a peek at it for a month and then cancel. So that's at patreon.com forward slash strange brow radio. All right, let's go back to our show with our guest, Mary Bethune. All right, so while we do this part here, I won't have a mic, so okay. you're going to do most of the narrating okay. here because we want to catch this on audio, so okay. we'll keep it that way. All right. Okay, so um, I'm a real avid afterlife believer and communicator. I don't know if that came out, but um, so I believe that you can get messages from loved ones either through audio, visual, um, music, that type of thing. I don't know if you can see that very well, but that that is like a heart shape in the in the sky. I don't know. Can you guys see that, or is it blocked off? Or so it was interesting because uh, well, my husband passed away about 13 years ago, and I do get. Um, communications from him and um, I had been thinking pretty heavily about him and I looked up I was laying in my hammock and I looked up and th that's what I saw so I thought that was pretty cool yeah, it's, yeah. A little, it's, a little hard to see. it's hard to see yeah the the yeah okay, yeah go to the next one I love that one this is my favorite one now my mom had passed away uh, and I had just gotten back from the service and um, all of a sudden, I just felt my mother just really strongly. And I, something said, look up. And I looked up, and I took this photo with my phone at the parking lot uh, where I work. So it looks like an angel to me. That's, so I'm thinking, gosh, I got a great communication from my mom, yeah. for sure. Yeah. Yeah, it's way more impressive on my computer. Yeah, yeah, it's, pr it's pretty amazing, yeah. Okay, and then... Oh, this is my favorite one. Okay, so this photo is from, it was the first wedding anniversary after Doug had passed, and my friend and I were down at the whole river, and I kept pleading with my husband, please send me a sign, please, uh, you know, I know you're here, and I was walking along the water, and all of a sudden I looked down, and that is a rock underwater with just the heart, perfect heart exposed, so that's, the, that's a rock. So I feel like that was another message from my husband, yeah. Those okay. are pretty cool, yeah. Now let's go to the second one here. Oh, yeah, don't, yeah. Well, just briefly, Ernest, uh, he was a professor of physics. Oh, he's a little man, too. Oh, there he goes. And he's, <laughs> he, just briefly, just briefly on the history of instrumental transcommunication, which is the use of um, 
TVs, uh, not audio, but TVs, any any type of uh, radio, that type of thing to communicate with those on the other side. So he's considered the father of ITC. This man actually won a honorary Nobel Peace Prize for his work in instrumental transcommunication in Sweden. So yeah. So let me explain this to you. Uh, North American Station is a contact group that I've been working with. Um, and when I say contact group, I'm talking about contact group on the other side, so in the afterlife. And I was introduced to this group through the uh, Afterlife Research and Education Institute with Craig Hogan. And they've been doing all kind of work, uh, encouraging people and teaching people how to make contact with the other side, specifically your loved ones. So uh, some of these are from the North American station. Now, technically, they say that some of the people, the contact people on the other side uh, is Tesla. Steve Jobs and uh, is one of them. Um, John Lennon, which I really haven't gotten much on, which I'm really bummed because I'm a big John Lennon fan. Uh, so um, yeah, and a lot of these are through our family members. So let's see what we got. Yeah, this one says, Dad is happy. Okay, let's see if we can hear that. Are you happy? Yeah. Yeah. I heard, yeah. Yeah, so. What you'll hear is this is called EVP Maker, and what it is is you play this as you record your session, and the EVP Maker just takes a bunch of words and slices them up into different letters or different, um, so you can't really understand what they're saying. So the theory is is they use that to speak through it. So, so you're going to hear happy, yeah. I don't know if you'll be able to hear. Okay, okay. Are you happy? Happy. Yeah. 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 Happy. Yeah. So it's like one right after the other. Okay. Are you happy? Happy. Yeah. 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 This is really. I mean, if you've never done this, it, it really takes a while to get used to. It, it was really hard to get used to, but. <laughs> Okay, here, this is, this is really interesting. This was at the Hastings house. We had, a re this is an EVP, we had a recorder downstairs. Eulalie is the name of my dog who has passed away, and she was on our team. She was an uh, a investigator on our team. So this recorder is down in the ba bottom of the base Hastings house, and you're going to hear like, I don't know if it's somebody walking, but you're going to hear someone go, Eulalie, and then you hear a little kid at the end. Okay, play that again. <laughs> And then you hear the kid. I can't remember. I can't tell what they're saying, but. And the first part where it says you lay, Lee. Oh, really? Yeah, that's, no, there's nobody down there. There's nobody down there. Yeah. So you hear you lay, Lee, and then I can't make out the end, but, but it made me feel really good knowing my you lay Lee's still around because I really miss her. Mr. Tesla, are you here? He's here. Did you hear that at the end? You'll hear it. He's here right at the end. Is there a machine in the background too operating, like an IT? It's an EVP. It's EVP maker. You can get it for free online. Yeah. Mr. Tesla, are you here? He's here. It's right at the end. You'll hear. He's here. It's really quick. Yeah. And believe me, he does not like to be bothered. He's. He told me I was busy. He says, I'm busy. No, I couldn't either. No, let's do it. One, one. Oh, what are you doing? Yeah, let's see if you can play it. No, I can't hear that. Yes, that's my husband. Do you love me? You changed my heart. Did you hear it? That's my husband, yeah. Do you love me? You changed my heart. Yeah, I've gotten a lot of communication from my husband, so yeah. It's pretty cool. That gave me goosebumps. Woo. Yeah. So all right, I'll come back to the microphone. Did you guys hear those? All right. Has anybody caught an EVP themselves that's not part of the ops group here before? Raise your hand if you've ever caught an EVP. You have? Yeah. Well, you're a pro. You're supposed to. <laughs> what about anybody in the back? Nobody's ever caught one of these before. Well, sometimes you catch them and you don't even know, right? I mean, sometimes yeah. you can get an EVP. And you're not a ghost hunter. It's yeah. just like 
Yeah. Uh, they can turn up on video. They can right. turn up not just audio, right? Exactly. Yeah. 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 It was interesting because back, I say, in the 50s, uh, Swedenborg was kind of the uh, father of EVP. He had gone out to record Birdsong. Mm -hmm. And so he came back in and he was listening to it and he actually heard his mother talking to him and using his nickname, his childhood nickname. So that started him on, of course, the path of recording EVPs, and he ended up with like thousands and thousands of EVPs. So, it's, so he's kind of like a pioneer in that. He's, wow. long, he's long gone now, but yeah, but that's exactly what you're talking about. You, now, these are all in English, too, mm -hmm. right? Have mm -hmm. you ever caught an EVP that is of a oh, different yeah. language? Oh, yeah. Yeah, we've uh -huh. caught, I've caught some in Spanish. I speak Spanish, so that's not an issue. We, mm -hmm. Here we caught one in German. We're walking down the hall. And we happened to know someone that spoke German, and we sent it to him, and what they were saying was, be not afraid. Oh, really? Yeah, and then when we were at um, Pantage Cedar in Tacoma, we caught some Italian. Yeah. Just a, a female like a, or a male voice? A, a male voice talking about, uh, it was going, mi a mi, which means... Yeah. Mi amor, mi ami, uh -huh. my love, that type of my thing. Love. Yeah. And then at uh, Port Gamble, in what used to be the doctor's clinic... It's a business now. We caught something, I swear to God, it sounds like the guy, the Muppet guy, the Swedish Muppet guy, <laughs> the cook. <laughs> we haven't yes. been able to get a translation on that, but it's definitely, I even reversed the file trying to figure it out, but I couldn't reverse it. I mean, there, I reversed it, but it's still not a language that we can figure out. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he sounds, he sounds like the Muppet guy, he really does. So. Okay, what about using Ouija boards? Is that something that you guys ever do to contact no. in our session? Mm -mm. No, we don't use it. No. No, we just not. What about people that have Ouija boards? Do they have more incidences and you have to come in and kind of clean up the mess? No, we haven't had that experience. We've had, I mean, the people that have had Ouija boards that I, I've known of, uh, clients, usually will get rid of them because uh -huh. they're scared. It scares them. And uh, But we've never had anybody open a portal, so to speak, which you kind of do when you use this, even the ghost box, when you use the ghost box. You will open a portal, I think, to to ghost to communication with something. You know. Have you seen a portal? No. No. Mm -mm. I've never seen one physically. Right. No, never have. I'd like to. But you believe they exist. Oh They're yeah, absolutely. Coming out of a portal. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. I do believe that. Yeah. I mean, because we're all energy, you know. Mm -hmm. So, um, and you know, you can't destroy energy. So. What about these uh, balls of light? Have you seen these balls of light? We well, orbs? we've I've seen a few things that mm -hmm. I, I mean, of course, a lot of orbs are dust. We may have had something here. Well, right? that's what I was just going to say. Yeah. I mean, they were saying that they saw something right here. Both these guys saw it at the same time. Yeah, but we just have a quick little flash of white. Uh huh. Was it round or? Wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, what do you think is up with that? Do you think that there's something to those being involved with ghostly activity, yeah, or I, I think what's the relationship? I think it's an. I think it's energy. I think mm -hmm. it's like a an attempt at a manifestation of energy of, of a form. Mm -hmm. That's what I think it is. You know. Yeah. Because I think that you know we we we're made of energy. And some people say they can see faces and shapes. I've seen pictures them. of that. Yeah. yeah, and some of them are you can't explain, but some of uh -huh. them are you're like mm, you're just wanting to see that or yeah. What's it called? Pareidolia, pareidolia. Yeah, 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 yeah. Pareidolia. Yeah. Yeah. So. yeah. Do you do anything like scrying or working on your own to contact things when you you are just being merry at home? I well, I'll do a lot of ghost box stuff at home. Um, I just do, you. Yeah, just me. Yeah. Doesn't creep you out. No. I've You're never, used to it. Yeah, I've never had any trouble. I have, I've been doing the ghost box now for 11 years, and I have contacts on the other side that I work with um, who help me with the sessions. One of them is Bill. He's been around. He's a spirit. He's been around forever, but he kind of monitors the session. Okay. And, and, you know, if there's any jerks that come through. Because I've been, we've gotten the F-bomb come through on the, I mean. It gets yeah. dirty. Yeah. And okay. I've been called bitch and whatever you want, whatever, <laughs> you know, I've been called. And usually he'll, I'll ask him to get those people to remove those spirits. Those Bill. People. Yeah, his name is Bill. Okay. He's my, I call him my technician or my guide. That's who I work well, what with. Do, how do you, well, what do you know about Bill besides the fact that Bill comes through and, and tells you his name? I don't know anything about him. No. Nope. You don't feel like it's a past I don't relative think it is. No, or I don't think a past so. version of you or no, nothing like that? No, I don't that. think so. No, I don't get that feeling at all. All I know is that he's kind of the guardian of the sessions. Sometimes he does not come through, which 
I kind of can understand that, you know. Does Bill have the same voice every yeah, time? Yeah, same voice every time. Mm -hmm. And he, he usually says the same thing. He'll usually say, what's up, you know. Right off the bat, oh, what's yeah, up? what's up, yeah. Okay, so that's when you know. Yeah, and it sounds, it's always the same voice, you know. <laughs> so, yeah, it's pretty cool. Uh, yeah. yeah uh, who cool. else comes through? Um, and what's their job? Well, I've had another tech, his name is David, but he hardly comes through at all. I mean, he on uh -huh. occasion will come through, but it's mostly Bill. And, you know, when I do a session, I always call in for protection, you know, make sure that I have, I'm protected by my guides, because I believe that you have people that, on the other side, that are there for you. Mm -hmm. So I always ask them to come in and protect, protect me and whoever's involved in the session, mm -hmm. you know, and make sure that the session is guided and doesn't deteriorate. I really have it, like, the worst thing that's happened, I think, is mostly just the foul language. Right. Yeah. Or there'll be a few times where we'll get, I'm, I'm going to kill you, that kind of stuff, but... Um, Nothing ever comes of it. So wow. So the protection, the guides. I hear a lot about that. People have different versions of what their mm -hmm. guides look like. Right. Some are angelic. Right. I've even talked to a group of psychics down in Cottage Grove. They said their guides were more canine like, like Anubis. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So they can take any. I think they can take any. Yeah. Form. Yeah. I, I do believe that. Well, you know, and some people think that extraterrestrials, what, what, the whole ghost box thing that started um, with Frank Sumption, he really uh, started making the ghost box for extraterrestrial communication. It wasn't for talking to the dead. But it evolved into this that. This is the Frank's box? Frank's box, okay. yeah. Okay, it all yeah. started with Frank, what's his name? Frank Sumption. And he's trying to reach ETs. Yeah, he was trying to reach ETs, yeah. Really? Yeah, that was his, that was his thing. Uh -huh. And he felt that he had contacted ETs, through, you know, through the years. He's passed now, but um, he, um, that was his focus, was extraterrestrials. Hmm. Yeah. But you've had no experience with ETs, aside from the 12-foot tall yeah. Frank Manus. <laughs> I've seen uh -huh. UFOs. I mean, uh -huh. I've seen them. I've seen what I believe are UFOs. We went to ESETI, and we saw all these light anomalies coming off Mount Adams. But uh, Light anomalies coming out of it or on it? I think they were coming off. Out of the mountain. Okay. I, I mean, we had your uh, night vision, night vision goggles uh -huh. too. So yeah. Yeah. Oh, the other thing I went to, we talked, we remembered about Bigfoot. Remember, you had asked me a question about that when we went to Iseti. Yeah. David McKenna and I went to Iseti, and we got there, and it's dark. Okay. Right, and it's right, cold. Right. It's November, and so we get there, and David's out putting the coat in for the you gate know, the gate yeah and you hear this blah, 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 like that and it was like what the hell was that we think it was uh sasquatch really well i mean there's there are sasquatch sightings there yeah so. in the swamp and over by the horses i think is where they say the hot spot yeah, is. yeah 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 but that it was almost like someone was letting us know hey we're here you know i know that when we stayed there we we kind of got rained out and there was a lot of problems with the cattle all night long. Like it sounded like the cattle were getting killed. Oh! And uh, it was just a horrific sound of cattle screaming. But Ooh, we also hard. heard uh, squatchy sounds yeah. over in the the field. We all acknowledged it. I'd never seen them there. Um, but so you, when you're at East Eddy Ranch. Did you debunk anything to say, well, that was probably much ado about nothing, or was it so magical mm -hmm. that uh, you walked away with a believer of all the legends of East City? Well, I think... Because it's pretty, it's pretty over the top. It legendary. is over the top, yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I believe that there's Sasquatch out there. I do believe yeah. that. Um, I think there is some UFO activity there. I really do mm -hmm. believe that. Um, I think a lot of there were a lot of people going, "Oh, it's powering up. It's this," and it was like, "That's an airplane, people." You know, I mean, right? So a satellite people, turning. Yeah, a satellite, that mm -hmm. type of thing. So, that those are the biggest things. I think mostly the, the UFO stuff. But mm -hmm. um, I, you know, people talk about fairy energy and all this stuff. I, I just don't pick up on any of that. So, no. Yeah. Most of your research, though, is confined inside houses. Um, yeah, I did do some sessions out at Iseti, and I only got one EVP and it told me to hurry up. <laughs> <laughs> so that was it. I didn't get anything yeah. else. Yeah. So I, I found that kind of interesting because I would think I would get more than that, yeah. there, but I didn't. So. What about people that go into, I know one of the shows that we, we watch uh, regularly involves two or three guys, and they go into abandoned houses. Mm -hmm. Now, they, they're not just houses. Sometimes they go into abandoned anything. Yeah. And... Uh, they just walk in and start recording. Yeah. Now, the legality of that, I'm not quite sure. Yeah. If it's a ban and it's a ban, and I don't know right. what the rules are, 
Uh, if you're not armed or you're not breaking any laws, breaking in. Mm -hmm. Have you guys ever taken liberties of investigating a place that you had a hunch about? Like, yeah. that place is empty? No. No. Never, ever. No. No. Never done that. We did, we did have an experience where um, we got permission from the owner mm -hmm. to investigate the house and had the key and they were gone. And when we get there, the house had been broken into. <laughs> oh, so we really? had to call the police and the police are like, well, what, uh, do, you, what do you guys doing here unfortunately we had their number we were able to call them but right. they verified it was okay but they were looking at us like well what are you why are you guys all dressed in black t-shirts <laughs> what's all this equipment you know i said well we're paranormal investigators right, and right. we have permission and it was funny and then a couple of them like oh well i had this happen to me one oh, time yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. So the story was, start yeah like yeah but no we've never gone into a, a place set without permission uh -huh. it's just not worth it have you ever contacted anybody of uh you know, any merit or fame has, you know, Elvis Presley come through in an EVP session? Have you guys ever tried to work? No. Uh, I don't know. A famous person? No. The, the only one I've ever done was to the North American station uh, mm -hmm. for I was trying to get, it, supposedly supposed to be John Lennon. I don't know if it is or not. And um, I did get one, finally get one EVP where it was, they responded yes. And then right after they said yes, they said Yoko. Oh really? Yeah, I, which I thought was uh -huh. pretty interesting. I thought, well, well, maybe there, maybe it is John Lennon. I don't know, but no, I've never done the whole celebrity thing. So. Right, right. Not, yeah. not mm -hmm. curious about it. Okay, well, you have, uh, you have videos as well that you want to show us. So, why don't uh, now? I want to go into your file here, and I, I guess I want to make sure they don't take forever to load. Yeah. But um, are most of the videos you have? Uh, you know, clips of apparitions or objects well, moving? Well, most of these are from Klaus Schreiber, who was the, basically he's the one that started the video uh, loop feedback method. Okay. And well, explain what that is. Well, what it is, basically what it is is you take a video camera and you point it at a TV. Uh -huh. And, uh, you know, you have to plug it in, of course, you know, with the newer cam, with the new TVs, HDMI cables, that type of stuff. Right. And then once you've focused it, you take it and then you focus it in really tight to the to the picture. Okay. And the theory is faces, scenery will come through. And Klaus Schreiber, of course, he's passed as well, um, but he mm. was doing this back in the '60s and um, early mm -hmm. '60s. And all I've tried to do it. I have. I only got one time a, a couple of men, and that's not on here, unfortunately. But a couple of men with hats. So that's all I ever got. But a couple I, men with hats. With hats, yeah. The outline like of mint hats. Were like different. tall hats? Like some of them are tall, some yeah. of them are broad, broad you know. Yeah. Um, but m all these are from Klaus Schreiber. I just wanted to show what kind of work. Okay, so these are not your these videos. These are not mine, no, no. Okay. Yeah, and we don't but have you guys, them. you guys probably do have a bunch of stuff, though, I would imagine. Well, right? we, do have, we do have quite a few videos of, not a ton, but we have a few. Yeah. So. Where do you put, where do you keep uh, your... It's you have a website, yeah, a page, it's, a yeah. YouTube it's clipped page? on the forum, and uh -huh. we, you know, it's uh, under lock and key. But we do put post stuff on the forum to. For oh, why is that? Why is it in lock and key? Well, you have to. Well, we just don't want anybody getting into our site and messing around. Okay. You know? Yeah. So. So you do, do you do you hold a lot of stuff away from the public for a certain reason? Uh, some sometimes, yeah, because sometimes people don't. People don't want. They're, they don't want to be... Right, you're trying yeah. to keep your clients The privacy, safe. yeah. And but what, what about the specifics of the f phenomena? I mean, you have your own agenda mm -hmm. as well mm -hmm. to try to say, I want to make this normal to yeah. a public that's skeptical. Yeah, yeah. Well, we'll put... So, no, we do mm -hmm. have some stuff out on our yeah. website, yeah. But there's uh, there's a lot, so we don't have... We don't yeah. put a lot out on there. But there must be footage th that you die to put up, but the client is like, no, 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 yeah. no. Yeah, we do have... Yeah. We do have a few of those. Not a, it's really hard to get good video evidence. It really right. is. And we do have some decent photographs. Um, of course, I don't have any of these on here, but... Um, right. But um, it, it's hard. It, it's the hardest thing to get. A full body apparition. Ghostbuster yeah. apparition. Yeah, it's really difficult. Yeah. And I really get mad because there's people that are just, oh, I'll just take a picture with my phone. And then they get this phenomenal photo that you, <laughs> right, can't, right, right. you can't debunk. It's like, ah. You know, yeah. It drives me nuts. So. And most of the time, are these uh, elements transparent or are they solid figures? Or They can be either. Some yeah. of them are, like one was very, you could really see the, uh, this was at the Turner Joy down uh -huh. in the, um, what we called the uh, refrigerator where they put bodies and uh, right. 
and it's this outline of, and it's a bright light, and it's an outline of a fairly large man. You can see the head and the shoulders. Right. Yeah. So. Wow. That's pretty cool. Yeah. But what was interesting was Scott was taking, he has a full spectrum camera, and he was taking photos, and he heard someone whisper in his ear like, Shh, like that, and it, you see him jump on video, and he turned around and took the photo, and that's what he got. A so. full spectrum camera is different than a night vision camera. It's mm -hmm. seeing in that pink yeah, it's quality. Seen, yeah. Yeah. Do we have one of those here today? I don't. Mm -hmm. think, we don't have a full spectrum camera with us today, do we? Oh, okay, that's Darren a good has all the yeah. toys, but you yeah. didn't bring your toys. Oh, it's on his phone. Okay, you, yeah. Maybe you can show that yeah. to folks later. That'd be cool. Okay, yeah. 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 Darren's got a picture here. Yeah. Um, so, what all did we bring here? We have your SLS camera, which is your Connect. Right. We've we got have dictaphones and digital recorders. The, what else? We've got a Ghost Box PSP7. Okay. Where's that at? Uh, can, we, can we? Can we? Ooh, don't throw it, man. That's a beautiful. <laughs> That's a a SP7, SP7, um, yeah. Can you hand that to Mary? Yeah. Explain what you do with that. Well, you turn it on. Okay, no, let's, <laughs> let's, can we turn it on and you explain? Um, yeah, let's see. Is it, do you have batteries in it? Yeah. Okay. Okay, we're going to turn this on here. It's got a little antenna. So it's got a little antenna, so you can okay. hear this sweeping sound. Okay, put it up sound. next to the mic and talk. You can hear the sweeping sound. Yeah. So what are you going to do is you can re uh, sweep forward or backward, AM or FM. I'm trying to see here. So right now, if you can hear this, we're, we're sweeping forward. Here, let me hold it for you yeah. while you talk. I'm going to put it up here yeah. next. Come on, Mike. So what you can hear right now is we're sweeping forward on the, uh, the ghost box. And the ghost box theory is it's, you actually hack or cut the sweep um, wire. So it, it runs continuously. And um, the idea, it, it actually will run like every 0.10, it sweeps like 0.10 to 0.20 seconds. And the theory is, is that the spirits will use the, the white noise or the snippets from the radio for communication. So, so how did, okay, so to debunk this though, is there any way to say that this thing screws up on what you just said mm -hmm. and puts a whole sentence together because it's the nature of maybe not scanning quick enough? Or Yeah, and the thing about the PSB7 is you can adjust the rate. You okay. can adjust it slower or faster, or AM or FM. The AM, FM is a little noisier. You'll get a lot more radio noise, I think, but the uh. AM is, I think, a little better. I, mean, everybody, I think it's everybody's preference. Okay. But the biggest thing... and. Uh, I was talking to Randy about that earlier, um, is validation. You know, if you get, you ask a question and you get a direct answer. Right, right. You know. Um, like Tobe. Yeah. Toby. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah exactly. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or a lot of times we'll do, what, what color am I holding in my hand? And you, like, for instance, something green and you'll hear green. You know? Okay, so you, you go right into testing it out to see if this Sometimes is, we'll have, we'll do uh -huh. validation questions. Um, uh -huh. But like, for instance, the thing with uh, Pete at Hastings House. Right. It's so clear. Be here for that. You know, are you going to fix that? Be, right. I'll be here for that, you know. Now, what is this on the piano? I've been watching that thing. It looks like what? the little oh. box there on the piano. That is the Mel Meter. Okay, now I've seen these before. It's got a little yellow Lego doohickey and a yeah, wire. It's a little, it's, what, what does that do? What this does is it measures temperature and um, electromagnetic fields. So it's doing two jobs. It's doing two jobs, okay. yeah. So the theory is, is that, well, first of all, you use it to go around the room to see where the high electromagnetic fields are and right. document that. Yeah. And then the theory is, is that if there's spirits around, the, this will spike the number. You know, okay. the numbers will go way up. And it's nice to have, you know, we do baseline, base, bleh, baseline readings with this, and we also get temperature recordings. So, for instance, we were in a room, it was 85 mm -hmm. degrees, and all of a sudden someone says, hey, I'm feeling really cold in this corner. When you knew earlier that area was 85 degrees, mm -hmm. you can go back, maybe it's down to 65, who knows, you know. But it's kind of a tool, basically. Wow. So it, when we had the SLS camera going mm -hmm. here, we should have turned this on to see if there was... Yeah. Uh, a temperature Ch differential. Te temperature uh -huh. or a spike. Now, these you have to be careful with because they will, I mean, if you have it near a cell phone, they'll spike. If you have it near a certain uh, high... Stick, stick my cell phone next to it. I want to see what it does. Is it going up? Will it beep? Yeah, 3.6 3. from zero. Okay. So, yeah, so okay. it'll go up. So, um, and the theory is EMF too. Like, if you have a, you're in a bedroom. We went to this one house where... They had like a big fish tank and all these other things in their in their bedroom, right next to their bed. So the EMF was really high; it spiked really high. 
And EMF can cause people to have like hallucinations, um, headaches. Yeah, but how severe are hallucinations to the point where you would see a ghost? I mean, is that possible? I, I really don't know. I don't okay. know the answer to that. Yeah, I'm not but sure. you've you've debunked cases where EMF spikes are high due to engineering. Well, especially in that particular area. If there, yeah. if the if the majority of the experiences are in that area, yeah, it's kind of a like, mm. Mm. and we're not getting any evidence, so hmm. that that might be as well. That will be another thing for us to go. Well, this probably is not paranormal. Uh, right. So. What other things can EMF cause? It can cause. Uh, some kind of hallucination. Uh, can it yeah, cause? audio, visual hallucinations. It can nausea. Cause nausea, headache. Uh -huh. Okay. Yeah, sense yeah. of not, you know, not feeling well, like something's right. wrong, that type of thing. Yeah. Now, have you ever been confused between paranormal versus EMF, and found out later that you were subjected to something more rational and fooled by it? I I never have. No. No. Mm -mm. You know the difference. Yeah, I th I'm try I try to be really careful. Yeah. You know? I try to be really careful about that. Yeah. But I've never had that. I never had that experience. So, hmm. yeah. Now this looks like the least expensive. Yeah. Out of these two, is that the case? I'm gonna put the water just in case that's a an, a three hundred dollar <laughs> system. Yeah. But I'm not sure how much these are. What are those retail for? I think this one. I'm gonna say a hundred hundred plus. I think. A hundred. Yeah. Yeah. The PSB seven can run sixty to eighty dollars. I think. Yeah. I mean, this can be a spendy yeah. habit, it's right? It's really spendy, yeah. yeah. I have, like, six ghost boxes, so, yeah. Okay. <laughs> and my last one was, like, two, 300 bucks. Yeah, so, and the yeah. app that we're going to play here in a bit, it was, I think, nine ninety nine, And, um, you know, that's pretty incredibly cheap compared yeah. to what you guys paid for these here. But I don't know how successful we'll yeah. be with that. But, um, yeah, this can... How much... Well, I don't want to pry too much but how much have you invested oh my god <laughs> <laughs> i would say uh, tell us mortgage wise yeah <laughs> uh, uh, oh probably a couple thousand dollars I okay was, well that's, not, say, too that's bad. not too bad over the years yeah. so now I mean, you can spend that on one system yeah exactly yeah yeah, yeah. i mean, believe me i've been tempted but um yeah i try not to go too hog wild but yeah so what's the holy grail of places for you to go that you haven't been to that you want to investigate well, we're actually going to be going there this March. Ooh. Trans Allegheny Lunatic Asylum. Oh, really? Yeah, where it's in Where's Pennsylvania? West Virginia. West Virginia. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And it's uh it's going to be We're actually McKenna and David and I are and their their daughter Jenna, we're going on a paranormal vacation, so we're going to go to Gettysburg and Oh we're, my. So we're going to be doing a lot of Gettysburg's and, another place. And so it's an East Coast kind of... Yeah, it's East Coast. Okay. But trans Allegheny, I've always wanted to go there. So. And now will you have it all to your lonesome? I'm not sure. I don't, not there. No. They just are opening up after renovation. Yeah. Okay, so yeah. they're just opening up after yeah. renovation. Yeah, so... Okay. Yeah. So I, I'm looking forward to it. There's a lot of activity there. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the whole hospital thing, because, you know, I've worked in hospitals pretty much my most of my career, so I have a real, I can really relate to that, so um, it'll be interesting. Well, so how haunted is a hospital? Oh, really haunted. <laughs> <laughs> really haunted. You think about all the deaths that happen there. Yeah, um, it must be the most haunted place besides a graveyard. Uh, I think I think it, it really is. Yeah, it really is. I mean, I've seen apparitions. What have you seen? Um, when I used to be a nurse at Harborview, um, I had a lady who was terminal and she was getting close to the end and I had gone into a room to give her some medication and I went back out the room and I was standing like right outside the room and I, went, oh, sh I forgot to do this I went back in yeah. and there was a man dressed in oddly you know dressed in like old period clothes like 1940s clothes right standing in the corner that I had not seen and I didn't see him walk in and I said oh you I said hi I'm Mary and blah 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 and I said, who's that? And she whispered, well, that's my brother. I said, well, it's really nice that your brother's here. So I, I walked out the door, and I thought, I didn't see him walk in. So I got a little worried, so I walked back in, and she was dead. So I think he came oh to get her. Gosh. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, I think he came to get her. So. Is this an everyday occurrence where you have an experience while you're at work? Not of some every kind? day. Yeah, I had one. I mean, not that significant, yeah. but do you... See I, things. Yeah, I do. Yeah. yeah. I had one night, it was really busy, and I had caught up with all my patients, and I, I walked by the minor operating room, and I, I saw a little boy laying there, a blonde-haired boy, about nine years old. You know, I could describe his clothes, the whole nine yards. So I went up to the nurse's station. I said, will not you give me the chart to the kid in MOR1, and I'll go see him. And they go, what kid? I said, there's a kid 
nine-year-old kid, blah, 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 blah. They said, Mary, there's nobody in there. I said, there's a kid laying on the bed in MOR1. So I went back in there. He was gone. There was nobody in there. No, I mean, I think yeah. it was a spirit. I'm pretty sure it was a spirit. So. Wow. Yeah. Um, what about the misnomer? Well, maybe it's not a misnomer. Maybe it's, maybe it's true. Uh, about there being a weight differential after yeah. someone dies. 21 grams, yeah. 21 grams. 21 grams or 0. 0.0496 pounds. That's, yeah. I mean, when somebody dies, you see the essence of that person has gone. Mm -hmm. And you see the shell there. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. That essence is 20... 21 grams, 21 yeah. Grams. There was a doc, I can't remember when, but it was in Scotland, and that's the measurement they found that... After people died, it's yeah, twenty-one. They weighed twenty-one grams less than before. Now, have you worked with people that had NDEs? Yeah, I've had an NDE. Oh, yeah. So. Okay, well, we got all night. Yeah. <laughs> so I was. Oh, this is great. I was five miles out in the Olympic Peninsula, and um, we had just set up camp. And I usually don't use bugs. Don't bother me. So I usually don't use bug spray. But my there was big horse flies flying around. So they said, "Put the deed on. Put the deed on." So I said, mm -hmm. "Fine, I'll put the deed on." But within minutes. I knew something was wrong. I was starting to get really sick. My heart rate was skip. I was skipping beats. I couldn't breathe. And I, you know, I went to him. I said, uh, this, "I'm having an anaphylaxis," and so um, I remember laying on the ground and not being able to breathe. You know, it was horrible. And then there's a Native American legend where birds will come to take your soul away. So I'm laying there, and this hummingbird comes and lands in my hair. Oh my yeah. God. So I thought, uh oh, yeah, I'm in deep doo doo here. Yeah. So I leave my body. I remember looking down. I see my friend doing CPR on me. And I remember kind of floating up. And uh, I became part of everything. I mean, I felt, I, I felt like I was part of everything. I felt really at peace. Mm -hmm. And I remember seeing certain things pass before me. You know, I don't think it was a life review, but like things that meant a lot to me, like family members, my mm -hmm. dogs, that, that type of stuff. And then all of a sudden, I was walking down a tunnel. With a, bu a bunch of people, I didn't recognize anybody. I mean, but but I wasn't scared at all. I mean, I was not frightened. Wait, people walking in unison with yeah, you? Well, yeah, just different. Like different. an elevator style, or what do well, you mean? Well, it was just like people walking, a bunch of people walking down a big hall. But with you? Yeah, with towards me, somewhere. Towards somewhere, but there's like this big bright light. You know, there's that big tunnel of light. Mm -hmm. And I remember walking up to somebody, and I, I don't know if it was a teacher, but I remember looking at them, saying, and I don't remember seeing them. I just saw an outline. I remember saying. This is a mistake. I have to go back. I'm mm -hmm. not supposed to be here. And then the next thing I knew, bam, I was back in my body. So, yeah. Wow. Yeah. yeah it was pretty. The hike back was no fun, let me tell you. That was, <laughs> that was no fun. Now, some people, I mean, I've interviewed it, one guy in particular, and he said that there was a sense of longing to go back. He didn't necessarily want to be. Yeah, yeah. Did you go through that? No, because I just knew intuitively that it wasn't time. It was too soon. Mm -hmm. That it was a mistake that I was there. So I had to go back. It was like I have to go back. You know, mm -hmm. I can't wait. Which is, you know, what I did. So, hmm. yeah, it was pretty amazing. One of the theories I want to see what you think of. You can tell me to go pound sand if it doesn't <laughs> sound good to you. But um, ghost being just as freaked out to see us as we are them. Yeah. Are we the ghost sometime and yeah. some kind of weird time dilation where right. they're frightened by your presence? Mm -hmm. Have you ever wa wandered into something like that where the ghost seemed to be freaked out by you? I, I've had that happen to me. Uh, pers you know, personally, uh -huh. I've had that happen to me where I walked into um, it was a well, this was down at Virginia City. When I went down oh, and yeah. did investigation there. I'm a bucket of blood. Bucket of blood. Yeah, yes. that's a weird place. <laughs> that is. Um, but. Um, I had walked. I walked into some business. I can't remember. And I, I, I see this woman standing in front of me. But she looks. Uh, this is how I see spirits. It's like mm -hmm. they look out of place. They either dress different or their energy field looks different. But they looked at me and it, they were really startled. Like, who are you? And of course, I'm doing the same thing. Who are you? Right. Yeah. <laughs> right. Like, right. Right. They're probably looking at me, going, "What? <laughs> what kind of clothes do you have on?" Because obviously, uh, yeah. Yeah. So that was really. It was very quick, though. It was like a couple of seconds. So That's what uh, William Becker brought up, too, when we brought him down to Cottage Grove. He taught a class at the bookstore next to the pub we did the live event at. And I, he brought up an interesting point. What you're hitting on right now is that um, dressing the period mm -hmm. for what you're looking into right. and women kind of falling prey to being victims of, you know, more, I guess, aggressive Mm. ghost yeah. because you're not dressing the part for 
I see what you're you know, saying. Yeah, yeah, the 1900s. Yeah, I see. Yeah. I, I can understand that. Yeah. We've also used like... Um, more bonnets, ladies. That's what we more need. More bonnets and long dresses. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Never. Right. Yeah. No, but that's true. I, yeah. I agree with that. I yeah. Think, I think that it has... Forget you know. burning the bra. You need two bras yeah, on. Yeah, two bras. Yes. Yeah. And a corset. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but they, like the Turner Joy, there have been a lot of women uh, there who have been grabbed, like their butts, uh-huh. butts grabbed. And um, we had a... Uh, there was a pervert in the bathroom. Oh. I have to tell you, this is my favorite yeah. story. Yeah, he loves lovers, it. Yeah. It's so the pervert in the bathroom. All the women kept going to the, would go into the bathroom and felt like we were being watched. And it's mm. like you know, so we're looking for holes in the wall. You know, we <laughs> couldn't find any cameras or anything. So we're thinking, well, I said, you know, screw this. I'm going to find out what's going on. So I take my recorder in there, right. and I have to pee. Okay, so I have my recorder on, and I'm starting to pee, and all of a sudden you hear this man's voice go, "Yeah." <laughs> <laughs> and I caught it. I caught it on audio, <laughs> and I said to myself. There is a pervert. There is. <laughs> there is a pervert. So there is a pervert. Oh my gosh! You know, when we went back the last time, we should have. We should have. We should have got him. <laughs> yeah, I haven't either. Okay, good. <laughs> you may get a surprise. <laughs> so, yeah. So, and, and I think you know when you're in those kind of environments, I think there's yeah. going to be more. That is like the ultimate gig for a pervert is being a ghost. Yeah. Like if you're going to be a pervert. <laughs> Ghost is like the way to go. Yeah, I think so. I mean, it was the premise of a Scott Bale movie, and nobody saw that but me. But yes, be a ghost if you're a pervert. Yeah, that's true. That's yeah. very well. I believe it <laughs> after that experience. Let me tell you. So. Wow, cool. All right. Well, um, I want to uh, I want to play a couple videos here okay. since we have them, okay. and uh, so you're going to narrate again. Okay. Oh yeah. So this is really strange. These are cats in the afterlife. This is from his video loopback system. Oh, yeah, sorry, I had to pull that off YouTube because I couldn't find the other one. But, uh, yeah, so there are cats drinking milk in the afterlife. And this comes off his TV. This is all the work that he's done through the TV and the loopback method that he does. He has gotten pictures of his daughter from the afterlife, and um, he actually got... um, Swedenborg on the day of his funeral on his TV set. Yeah. You're saying that this right here is evidence of the afterlife cats drinking out of a dish? Yeah, could be. Okay. Could you never know. I mean you oh, never know. I just I want to make sure we yeah. one yeah. Okay. yeah. Now if you go there's a group in Seattle called Grupo Seattle, ITC Seattle, and they are doing phenomenal work. It'll blow your mind. You gotta go on their website and check them out. And I, I want to come back to the cats for a second yeah, here. Okay. Sure. That was a tough one for me. Mm-hmm. And it shouldn't be. Mm-hmm. Like, the weird stuff that's happened in my own world mm-hmm. is pretty bonkers. Yeah. But still, <laughs> I see stuff like that. I'm like, okay, now how crazy is life to the point where we're seeing cats drinking out of a saucer of milk mm-hmm. and calling that supernatural? Yeah. I mean, because to everybody else, I mean, it's, it's a pretty hard thing to sell. Yeah. I understand that strange things happen like that but um it, it's getting harder and harder for me to be an asshole when mm-hmm. it comes to looking at things like this yeah yeah you know what i mean yeah like, i do i, I can't I look exactly. at that and yeah. say in my own life i've got all this crazy stuff going mm-hmm. on people look at my story i'm sure and say okay come on well people do that with me too yeah, yeah. I, know, I know totally understand what you're saying but one of the things i always t- say is Known phenomena does not constitute the whole of reality. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. That's yeah. really the bottom line. I mean, just that I really believe that. You know. Yeah. I really believe that. So. Yeah. What's the strangest thing that's happened to you? Ooh. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> I'd have to think about that because I've had a lot of strange things. Well, I'm going to have to say the cryptid is the sa- strangest thing that's ever happened. Okay. That, that was the, one the, of the strangest that, stories. Yeah. That, that is the strangest thing. I mean, I've seen spirits... I've heard them. I've had all these, you know, prophetic dreams and yeah. things come to me, but that is that ranks number one weird for okay. me. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. How often does synchronicity play a part in all of this for you? Do you see a lot of synchronicity in your work where things just like match up, unbelievable? Mm-hmm. I do. I just was. I think I was talking to Aaron about that just a little while ago. Um, I had a an astrological reading a chart done and mm. we were doing it over the um, zoom mm-hmm. zoom meetings and um 
But let me preface this before I start that. When I had gone to East SETI, I had a reading by James Gillian. And James Gillian, uh, what he does is he looks at past lives and clears out past lives and then gets you in touch with who your mm -hmm. one of your main guides are. And so he had told me, he says, you've been a healer in many of your lives, which yeah. I knew. And he said, um, you have been trained in the house of Mary, Mar Mother Mary. Okay. Said, okay. And then he said... Um, well, is that because you have Catholic roots? Maybe. I don't know. Yeah. Okay. And he says, but your spirit guide is Mary Magdalene. And I thought, well, that's cool. You know, so I kind of kept that with me. So okay. I thought, you know, that's neat. But when this lady is doing my reading, uh, my astrological chart, part of what she does is she looks at um, what spirit guides you could have, that type of stuff. And one of the things that showed up in my chart, one of the first things that showed up in my chart was Mary Magdalene. And she oh. didn't, she didn't oh, know really? this. And then I have a photo, but it's on my phone, of a Carillion photo that was done years ago. Mm -hmm. And when you look at the left side, mm -hmm. you can see an outline, and it looks like Mother Mary holding a child. And this, this photo is probably 20 years old, 25 years old. So that's kind of synch synchronicity. Mm -hmm. yeah. what it, explain what Carillion photography is. Well, it's just basically it takes photos of your auras. Okay. That's I'm not sure the actual science behind it, but uh, I know that that's what it does. So yeah, yeah, it's pretty cool. It takes a certain camera to pull this off. Yeah, there's yeah some, yeah, some type of camera. I really don't okay. I couldn't tell you much there's about. There's probably it. an app for it. I'll yeah. download it. Later. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> probably nowadays. Yeah, there's an app for take everything. Take a Krillin shot of me real quick yeah. here and get me some yeah, give me some sage on the rocks. Um, <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well. What I want to do here is maybe we'll fast forward things up a little bit. And what I would hope that we could do is I'm going to upload this app here. Now, cool. I will preface this that we talked earlier about portals. Now, it's mm -hmm. possible there's already one here. And we're right. not doing anything other than accessing it. But if you're not comfortable with the possibility that we're about to open up a portal by turning this thing on, mm -hmm. now would be your chance to go, go grab a drink or go to QFC. And um, God bless you for coming. But um, would you be comfortable trying to interact with whatever's going to come through yeah. here? Okay. Yeah. And then sure. I don't know if your SLS, is it dead or is it working? Okay. Let's see if we can get the little midget back. <laughs> um, we can even play some mood music if he wants man. us to. Um, and uh, so let's do that here. How's this camera working, by the way? Is that rolling uh, on my, my camera right here? Is that still filming? Okay, good. Okay, we're on there. So if the little guy comes back, maybe we can catch something with that. Um, let's uh, let's turn this on here. Darren, can you turn on the power button on that Bluetooth pill-looking speaker there? There's a round button. Yeah, turn that on. Okay. I'm going to make sure it should power up. Okay. There we go. I'm going to go into my Bluetooth, make sure that's on. Okay. So... Yeah, I'm I've, okay. I've so just it. so people know, I'm using an app that had five star reviews and that Steve Huff said was good, um, which uh, is called the Necrophonic. That's a terrible name. I'm sorry. I know. <laughs> I know. <laughs> any, I'm not any, say anything. <laughs> well, yeah. And look how ridiculously goth it is here. Yeah. Whoever's watch, if anybody from Necrophonic.com checks this out. We got to work on your Hot Topics font logo here yeah. because <laughs> it's a little bit redundant. Yeah. We get it, you know. You don't need to throw in all the pentagrams. Yeah. Okay. okay. So let's hit start. And um, is that door closed there? Can we close this door too in the back, actually? Okay. I'm going to take my headphones off so I can hear this as well. All right. Let's start it here. And so. hello. Would you like to speak to us? I heard no, a whispery no. No, possible yeah. no. Yeah. Why not? Um. Can you at least say hello? Well, that sounded like Spanish. Yeah, it did. Did you guys hear Spanish? Yeah. Ora? Habla español? Now, is this the dancing man here, the Spanish? Yeah. See? Yeah. Do, you, 
do you want us to play more music? Please. It sounds, Did you hear okay. please? Yeah. Please? Okay. Will, All right. Will you come back and dance with us? And now if we play music, will you dance with us? Well, we can't dis can't disappoint him, can uh, we? No way. Let's All right. Do it. So you keep talking. I'm gonna okay. I'll be the DJ, senor. Right. So you really like to dance, huh? True. It sounded like you said true. I don't know if that's, that's what it was. Do you like fast music? Nope. Yes. yes. Yeah. So what, what is your name again? I can't, I, I haven't heard your name yet. I'm Mary. Hmm. It's a secret? It's nice to meet you, too. Did you like that song? All right, we had to shut that transmission down a little bit preemptively here due to copyright infringement stuff coming up, possibly. And that's just the way it goes when uh, you're doing a live event. Uh, you know, you got to play some ambiance music. In that case, we were playing music for... Well, God knows who. Um, it certainly was a mystery to me. And it was a little dancing person thing, stick figure thing on this SLS that was corresponding by us turning the music off. The little thing would disappear, quit dancing. We'd turn Elvis Presley back on. He'd come right back. Um, I think the name that we got from this via the necrophonic all these words I'm using nowadays, um, was uh, uh, Paul kept coming up. And of course, there was seemed to be Spanish as well. I don't know how all these tools work. It could be a bunch of bunk. Um, the little guy, though, was pretty interesting. The fact that it would come and go with music and was moving to the rhythm. I mean, unless that was pre-programmed, which I don't think it was. I don't think it could be. Um, I'm not saying it wasn't. I don't know. Get back to me. Let me know. And I, I will actually, some of this is already posted on the Strange Brow Radio Facebook page. And uh, I'll, I'll get some stuff up on the website too regarding uh, photographs and videos on strangebrowradio.com. But anyway, uh, a successful show. Thank you again to Mary Bethune. Who I'll, I also mentioned that there was this EVP that we possibly caught. And after further review, my mind is made up solidly in the camp that it's too hard to tell. Just too hard to make that call. So I'm not even going to bother uh, sharing it with you because I want to stick close to some of this stuff. Uh, you know, being weeded out as we go along. There's just too many weeds. So I think that was voice contamination debunked. Gadunk. All right, the next live show that we'll have is coming up on March 7th, 2020. I feel so weird saying that. And I will release shortly who our guest is going to be. And, well, you can find out more about this at strangebrowradio.com. There you will find the guest list of 2017, 18, 19, and now 20. And soon we'll release that name. But again, that's March 7th, Manresa Castle, Podcastle Live at strangebowradio.com. Thank you for listening. Thank you for being a sponsor at patreon.com forward slash strangebrowradio. And as always, remember, I will see you in the trees. Mm -hmm.